Hello everyone, this is Jack with Obedia. Today we're going to be looking at Pro Tools 4 edit modes, shuffle, spot, slip, and grid. Let's get started. Okay, so I have this one track here um, that just simply has um, counting in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's take a listen to that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the um, the the voice that's built into the Apple computer. Um, they call them Alex, uh, and a lot of times I will use this file um, if I'm producing like a rehearsal track or something like that to help count off parts. So let's say the artist is going to listen to a track while they play, um, I will count off their song with Alex here. So. Um, as of right now, I have this just one track in the session, and uh, I just want to kind of explore these different edit modes. So right now, I am in Grid, and Grid is going to essentially give us this uh, the snap to grid function. Grid does not turn on the grid. So up here uh, in the kind of middle of the top screen, I have this little green grid button. Notice that I can get rid of the grid, but still snap to it. So if I want to see the grid, uh, I can click that, and then I can choose the density or the resolution of the grid there, uh, right next to it. But uh, this blue button over here, the blue edit mode grid, will allow me to snap to that grid. Just to give you a little bit of a, a contrast for a moment, if I go to slip, slip will not snap to the grid. So it will just allow me to click anywhere and move anything without snapping to the grid. Let me zoom in just a little bit and I'll show you. So if I click here in the middle of these two uh, grid lines, that's fine in slip mode. If I try to click there in grid, it will snap to the closest one, which could be useful. Um, there's another grid mode that some people are, uh, are curious about, which is if I click the the grid mode, it will turn purple and it will say relative grid or rel grid. And what this is, is let's take a look at this first count off here, this one. If we look at that and we see that that's not actually, it starts a little bit before that, what that will actually do is allow me to move that relatively for that um, part of the grid. So let me kind of explain this. So if I, let's cut this section out so it's its own little clip. So I'm going to click before it, hit tab. My ta tab to transient option is on up here. So I'm going to hit tab. It gets me right to the beginning of that. And then I'm going to hit B for break. So then I'm going to go to the end of that waveform. And I'm going to uh, just snap to the grid and hit B. So at the end, I'm with the grid. But at the beginning, I'm not. So let's say that I'm in regular grid mode and I want to move this to another portion of the song. If I move this this way, then it's going to snap the front of it to the grid. If you remember correctly, the beginning of this clip was not with the grid. So really what would be better if this isn't in the right place, then maybe I want to move that relatively with the grid. So if I do that, now it's going to keep it in the same position uh, relatively speaking with the grid, but yet I can still move it on the grid, if that makes sense. Uh, so that could be a really useful thing. Let's say you had a, a vocal or something on a chorus that there was like a breath, like a, and then the vocal happened. Maybe the breath is before the grid downbeat or the one, but the chorus starts on the one. Instead of trimming the vocal like this, and then moving it and trimming it back out, maybe you could just use relative grid and then uh, it would be a little bit easier or quicker. Uh, the other thing to mention, I'm gonna go backwards here, just Command Z. Uh, the other thing to mention is while in grid mode, uh, you can hold the Command key and temporarily get out of grid mode. So right now I'm holding Command and I can move things around. Uh, in fact, the whole, um, clip I can move around as I want, kind of like I'm in slip mode. And then as soon as I let up on command, I'm back to grid mode and it's going to snap again. Let me zoom in and show you. So I'm in regular grid mode here and it's snapping to each little part of the grid. But if I hold down command, now 
I can move along smoothly, just as if I was in slip mode. So for most uh, applications, if I'm going to be working within a tempo, like let's say 120 in this case, if I'm going to be working within a tempo, it really behooves me to use the grid option. And then if I need to go outside of the grid, I can use command. So I can kind of temporarily be in slip mode. Um, the other option is, of course, using relative grid to move things around, relatively speaking, on the grid, which could be a time saver. Now, uh, the two other modes aren't used as much by most people, but they do have their place. So let's say there was a situation where uh, I have a whole bunch of edits this way. So um, there was a whole bunch of kind of crossfades and all kinds of things, and I wanted to move this stuff, this whole group of stuff, to the left. I could come through and shift click all of these things and select everything and then move it if I wanted to. Or there's an easier way to do that. With shuffle, what I can do is I can select an area and then I can delete it and it's going to kind of bring everything back to that. It's going to completely remove that time, so to speak, from that track. Now if I had multiple tracks here, Let's say if I duplicated this um, and had multiple tracks, if I just I could do shuffle just on one track, or I could do shuffle on both tracks at the same time. Uh, you could do shuffle on all tracks if you want. You could have your all group in, and you could have you know 100 tracks and do that. Um, so that's kind of an interesting uh, use there. There's some other uh, options with shuffle, uh, but that's really the most important one or the most popular one. Um, so the last one here is spot. And spot is used in a couple of ways. Uh, one of the ways that spot is used is when you're bringing tracks into the session. Um, but for shorter Pro Tools sessions, spot may not be that useful. But uh, especially in longer sessions, if you were doing a post-production for film uh, or you're doing a long concert or something like that, it could be really useful. So before I use spot, I'm going to go into grid mode and kind of prepare this clip that I've clicked on. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold command since I'm in grid mode. I'm going to kind of clean it up at the beginning and then bring the back and clean that up there. So now I just have this one clip. Now if I go into spot mode, what that's going to do is when I click on this clip, it's going to say, where do I want to move this? So it's going to allow me to spot it somewhere in the actual session. So right now it tells me the start and sync points and end and all that kind of stuff. But perhaps I want to, that, that clip to be at measure 55. So I'm going to start it at measure 55. And then it's just going to just jump to that part of the session. So if I hit OK, it disappears there. But now it's at measure 55 out here. So this could be something that could be a, uh, um, a good workflow if you had um, some points, let's say, written down where you know, okay, measure 55 is the, the last chorus, or measure 55 is where this part of the movie happens, and I want this sound effect there, or whatever. So this spot option could be a really quick way to get things um, placed, as opposed to, you can imagine, if I went over here and grabbed that clip and then not in spot mode, let's say in grid mode, then I just drug it all the way over there. Of course, I could zoom out and maybe do it a little bit quicker, but if I know it's going to measure 55, it's a lot easier to use spot. So um, that's kind of an overview of the four edit tools, uh, shuffle, spot, slip, and grid. There are some additional features with those um, that we perhaps will go into in a later video, but that's a good overview and that'll get you started. Most of the time, if you're doing tempo-based music, I would stay in grid and then use command to get out of it if you need to. And then, of course, you can also use slip if you were doing like classical music or something like that. That may be a little bit more appropriate because you, you might not be on a grid. Well, I hope that helps and be sure to check out some of our other videos. We'll see you soon. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. 
Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.